You mentioned the business skills. How have you expanded from participating in those to building uh, a living out of this? How have you marketed? I think I've been very fortunate to come across certain people like um, Kimberly Patterson, who was a freelance journalist who gave me some advice about uh, self-promotion, and um, and that's come in handy. I think I've realised um, in the past few years that being an artist is pretty much like being a sole trader. So you got to treat, you know, it, there's a, a lot of same, shameless self-promotion <laughs> involved. And, um, yeah, and just treating it as a, a business and trying to balance that with the completely creative side, which is painting. Does that invite, uh, I guess, people and perhaps those uh, wanting and not doing as well as you are in terms of selling paintings to say, well, it's all marketing hype? rather than, than um, you know, the brilliance of her art. Do you ever get any of that? Um, I haven't so far. You're the first. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it's definitely a, a combination of the two. You've got to have a great product. You've got to have beautiful art as well as... Um, yeah, as I well read, as be able to market yourself. I, I read uh, one gallery uh, or uh, exhibitor, uh, one gallery or exhibitor, saying that she's always delighted when she tells people uh, that you're self-taught and and self-promoted and and does sort of get a bit of that scepticism and then they see oh, the work. Yeah. <laughs> so, this, and she's pleased with their oh, reaction. She mustn't be very good, which then, is yeah. a relief, a relief to you, no doubt. How much are you able to sell your work for? Oh, there's a, a huge range because of the different sizes that I, I paint. I paint from very small to, you know, two metres by two metres sort of thing. So um, you'd have to look on the website for exact figures, but, yeah, the range is... Up, up to 14,000 for to those 14, larger 000. works, though. Yeah, and for the smaller works, it's, you know, around $500, $800. So there's a big range. <laughs> How are you balancing that challenge between... Um, making a living and, as you describe it, um, running a business. And I hear that that matters uh, to you. You're not, you don't like the impoverished artist lifestyle. <laughs> How do you balance that between that and the demands of um, needing to spend time just concentrating on the work? Yeah, I, I think it's about 50-50 at the moment. There's a lot of administrative work, and, um, and so just whenever I can, I paint. I, whenever the creative juices are flowing, I, I, I go for that first. Um, but then there, there is a lot to take care of and the answering emails, you know, just organising shows, um, yeah, communicating with people really is what it is. Oh, I just spent the last few days doing my GST return, so there's a lot of, you know, the boring stuff. There's that stuff. as well. Yeah. Come back to the, the work itself and, and uh, some of those themes that you've explored and obviously that the diverse cultures and the portraiture has been a key part of that. What do you seize on? What are you looking for when you're trying to examine that? Well, I I don't think I know when I'm painting. It, it's something you see after the the work is created. You look back and and you realise that you've created this this person on canvas with this personality, a character, a beauty about them, and then you almost like while I'm painting I'm getting to learn about what I'm creating yeah you've moved as you said into exploring your own Maori uh, heritage um, how extensive has that work on uh, been in the Maori mythology work been in? well I started off with um, really focusing on the uh, the creation myth Ranganui Paputuanuku being separated Ra- Sky Father Earth Mother being separated by their children um, well, Tane Muhuta in particular and um and then from that, um, I created a, a series of works that really divided the canvas up um, into these sections, which seemed um, quite heavy in a way. Like the, it really showed the forcing apart of the Sky Father and Earth Mother. And uh, yeah, from then I decided to find out more about my own Ngāti Poro his, uh, heritage and um, really explored the depth of the connection between uh, people and land and Māori culture. You've also moved further into uh, different work, uh, waka and, and coastal scenes. Yeah. Oh, there's just so many um, interesting legends, myths, histories um, to to Māori culture, to Ngāti Poro, um culture. And 
so part of that is the voyaging history, the the waka and um, you know Kupe's joint journey to to Aotearoa um, from Hawaii, uh, you know perilous sort of um, challenges that he faced on his journey here and with the landscape, with the coastal paintings that I've done, they're, they're always telling this story. So you, you see a world, but then there's this whole story to it. There's elements within the painting that mean um, something um, yeah, about the past or about nature and, and what the people in the stories have been through. What's the process for you? Uh, you mentioned that you don't necessarily sit and plan, if you like, or, or think actively about what it is that you want to bring to the canvas. When you're working, um, do you begin just what, with with sketching ideas, with um, playing around with ideas? Um, I, I sometimes do compositions on Photoshop, just, you know, sorting out the uh, how I'm going to lay out the canvas. Um, but there's usually a vision in my head beforehand anyway. There's... I'm trying to explore some subject matter, um, whether it be a portrait or at the moment I'm doing this massive cigarette with a long ash called Long Ash Tower and it's like this Lord of the Rings type um, tower in a stark landscape. And um, I, I have absolutely no, no idea what it means at the moment, but it, I had this vision and I need to carry that through and sort of learn the story as I go. And so you, um, well, that's just come out of the blue, has it? It's quite a oh, departure yeah. from Nari <laughs> mythology and from landscapes and from portraiture. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's just presented itself to you. Yeah, I tend to start with a certain theme and then perhaps carry that on for a year or so or however long it needs to be where I'm constantly developing that theme, like the um, Ranganui Papatuanuku series. Um, and then I just go to the next one if, the, if that's what's in my head, in my heart. <laughs> Have you ever had, I hate to put it this way because I know how hard artists work, um, but have you ever had the real, what we call the real job, what, what those who, who may not have been as fortunate um, or as um, proactive as you in getting established in a career might have to do on the side? Have you ever had to do that? I have. I worked with my sister for quite a while at her graphic design company and I was the gopher. I was the mm. um, sort of receptionist, a bad receptionist, actually. <laughs> I got told that I um, need to smile when I answer the phone so that I sound happy and chirpy. But yeah, <laughs> so I've done a bit of that, but not much. You know, it's mainly been this um, this art thing, this really having to motivate myself in order to create a career. <laughs> there hasn't been any dreaded wait waiting on tables or anything like that for you. You've made it work yeah. from a very young age. Do you have a sense of how the New Zealand art world regards you or views you and where you're at at the moment? Um, not a real sense because, you know, my friends and family are all so supportive and then I see the odd magazine article about me, so, you know, mostly good sometimes, um, a little bit tongue-in-cheek about, you know, a self-taught sort of thing, you know, going against the grain. Um, and really the people I talk to are mostly admirers or supporters, so I can't really get the negative side of things. <laughs> and who cares anyway if you're getting it done your own way, I suppose. Well, that's it? right. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us. That is Sophie Emmonson, who is uh, running her own business, making a living out of art at just 23. As we said, we have a link through to uh, her website if you want to see the work that she is doing.